this video, I'm going to show you how to take the finish on the right and turn it into the finish on the left in a few easy steps. First, I have to make a little bit of a disclaimer. This is the very first wood pro woodworking project I've ever done, so uh, this is how I did it. Uh, it's probably not the right way to do it, but I seem to like the results pretty well. Um, what we got here, we have uh, three-quarter inch birch veneer plywood. Um, I, got, I put three coats of uh, min wax, a uh, water-based stain on it. Um, and I put two coats of the water-based polyacrylic on it, did two coats, and then sanded it with 320 grit with a uh, random orbit sander, just lightly enough just to take out all the big bumps and get it somewhat smooth. And went back, put a really thick third coat on it, and then um, from there I'll show you what I did next to get this nice finish. Alright, first off, uh, I used to use the 400 grit on this vibrating quarter sheet sander but it turns out that it scratches things up easier, I don't know, I'm just maybe not using it right, but again, I'm a noob. Uh, to solve this problem, I uh, just uh, jiggered up this thing and uh, took some old uh, sanding paper with the Velcro on the back for the random more sander, put some duct tape, and uh, I now have 400 grit uh, sandpaper on this. I had 320 grit ones, but they scratch it a little bit too deep, and then it ends up scuffing it. And by the time you get to your final buffing out of everything, you'll see little scratches in there. It'll actually make the the uh, tint a little bit cloudy almost. It's, it's really evident on black, but on other colors you might be able to get away with it. But for black, I'm definitely going to go with uh, the 400 grit to start off with. Okay, I just got done sanding it with 400 grit on the random orbit sander. And uh, you can see there's a little bit of uh, kind of grain from the... Uh, uh, brush strokes when I put the last coat on. Uh, I'm probably going to hit this a little bit more with uh, the 400 grit and then go from 600 grit. Uh, what another thing is, just be careful around the edges. Uh, they do go through pretty quickly even with uh, 400 grit on there. So uh, just be careful around there. Usually I leave them a little more rough and then uh, hit them up with the 600 grit because that's a little, a little bit more slow at taking stuff off. That way you don't have to worry about going through and nicking the stain and screwing everything up. Okay, I just got done doing uh, for, uh, the 600 grit and I might hit it up some more because you can see a few spots here where there's a little bit of scuffing from the uh, 400 grit yet. Uh, I, I'll hit it up a little bit more and then uh, I'll do the double O uh, steel wool. Okay, I just got done hitting it with the uh, 3M pad. It's a double O synthetic. Make sure you use synthetic uh, wool. Uh, I guess really for in between layers, but uh, otherwise it will rust because it is water based. Um, but this is a double O steel wool, and uh, the Velcro works really nice for uh, sticking it on there. And just very got to be a little bit careful with some of the finer ones because they kind of like to rip up easily. Um, and you can see here, can't see any real scuffing or anything like that. I apply a uh, pretty good pressure. Uh, when I do this uh, first uh, double O go through on it because uh, you got to make sure you get all those uh, little scratches out from the four and six hundred grit sandpaper but uh, it's looking really good right now so uh, I'll hit it up with the uh, triple O next this is what it looks like after the triple O steel wool um, you can see the shine's really getting there it's starting to actually be a little closer to the mirror finish but um, and now I'll do the uh, quadruple the O. Uh, one thing to note though, uh, I ended up using some painter's tape, otherwise these get tore up really easily by the Velcro, so uh, I probably put a bit too much painter's tape on here, but it, it seems to work if you're taking it on and off uh, pretty regularly. Okay, this is what it looks like after the quadruple O. I do one more uh, extra step after this. I um, take some of this, uh, just this blue shop towel, and fold it over, put it on there, and uh, you get a nice buff uh, out of it. It seems to make it a little bit darker, as you can see here. I don't know how well it'll show up in the camera, but uh, you can see there's a little bit kind of a grayer tint to it, and this is uh, just straight from drying, no sanding or anything. And uh, looking at it really closely, it's actually just a, a little bit, of, uh, the scuffing refracts the light to make it a little bit lighter. And I want to keep it really dark, so I'm going to. Uh, go ahead and do the last step with the towel 
and uh, I'll show you the results. And that's the results of it. Uh, you can see it's pretty pretty good finish. Um, it's not 100% perfect, but I think for the amount of time involved, it's uh, really well worth it. Um, and you can see that last pass there got a little bit darker, almost almost the same color as the uh, original clear coat. Um, but yeah, the one other thing to keep in mind when you're doing this, uh, you don't have to worry well, after you get to the steel wall you don't usually have to worry about going through anymore so take your time be patient with it apply a little extra pressure just make sure you get all those scuff marks out otherwise you'll get to the final coat and you'll be able to see them and then you're really pissed off because you have to redo the last couple steps but yeah so that's uh that's how you finish wood or at least how a noob does it so hope this was enjoyable and whatever else, I don't know, entertaining, informative, misleading, whatever.